Ever dreamt of a cake so light and fluffy? It's like a cloud of cake floating into your mouth. Say hello to Angel Food Cake. This is delicious. And if you've ever bought it in a store, it's not the same thing. It's a thousand times better homemade and so easy too. Hey, you're watching Preppy Kitchen where I, John Cannell, teach you how to make delicious homemade dishes to share with your family and friends. Today, we're making Angel Food Cake and it's gonna go quick. So let's get started. This light and fluffy cake needs a couple light and fluffy ingredients. So we're not gonna use regular granulated sugar and we're not gonna use all-purpose flour. There are workarounds, you can check them out on the blog post, but we're doing things the right way. So one cup of cake flour, which is 100 grams, it's a little lighter, there we go. Instead of using regular granulated sugar, we're using super fine or extra fine sugar. It just has much finer crystals. You see this? This is gonna make a difference. If you don't have it, or if it's not available at your market, just go ahead and use the regular granulated sugar, but really, whiz, 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 whiz it up because you wanna break them apart. It makes a difference in the meringue. If you don't have a food processor and you don't have it at your local store, use the granulated sugar, but we'll talk about that later. All right, so I wanna add in three quarters of a cup. This pulse, 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 pulse. You'll be here for a few minutes, don't worry. So this might seem like the finest of powders, but we're actually going to sift it a couple of times. An angel food cake is this amazing concoction of meringue with a little bit of flour mixed in just enough to give it enough structure that changes it from a meringue into a cake. So we don't want to weigh that meringue down, which is why we're going to be whizzing and sifting and whizzing and sifting. It might seem like a big deal, but it really isn't. It just takes a few minutes and just a little bit more. This is good. We've sifted it a few times. It's been whizzed a bunch and it's basically a cloud of flour. It might float away with some sugar mixed in. All right, set this aside, clean up your workspace. Then we have some eggs to separate and we're almost done. It's super fast. So this is Brian's new favorite cake. He totally forgot about it, but I was recipe testing it and he was like, munch, 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 munch. And he's like, oh my gosh, this is so good. So he's been mentioning it several times. So I was like, I've got to make this again. I'm going to show my friends on YouTube how to do it. And he's going to get the whole cake too. One piece for me, the rest for him. 10 egg whites or about a cup and a quarter. And I want to say about a cup and a quarter because I swear I go to the market sometimes and there's a tiny little baby egg and it's labeled extra large. And I'm like, girl, stop lying. I happen to have two egg whites left over from a previous recipe I did earlier today. So I'm adding that into the pile. And now what we want to do is break the eggs into that small bowl and you can separate the egg whites out however you'd like. I'm using my clean hands and the yolks go in one bowl for later and then the egg whites go in there until you're done. In case you're wondering, those yolks are amazing to make a French buttercream. Click up here for that. It is like the star of buttercreams and it needs egg yolks. So. If you ever make a meringue or whatever else, make some French buttercream, you will be so happy you did. You could also make pastry cream. <laughs> Click up here for my pastry cream recipe. Pastry cream is perfect for fruit tarts and filling chocolate eclairs. And you can click up here for my chocolate eclair recipe. <laughs> There's so many good uses for egg yolks, I'm sorry. Okay, I'll just get back to my egg cracking now. Exactly a cup and a quarter. See, and that's like a whole egg. It's, there's no rhyme or reason, so just, Go ahead and measure the egg whites out. This is gonna go into the stand mixer after a quick wash up. Okay, now for the fun part, we're making our meringue. First off, one and a quarter cups of egg whites right into that very clean bowl. And if you have any concerns about your dishwasher at home, one, give them a stern talking to, and two, go ahead and wipe the bowl down with either some lemon juice or vinegar just to make sure you want it squeaky clean. Next, we add in one half of a teaspoon of salt. And then to stabilize the egg whites, we're gonna add in one and a quarter teaspoons of cream of tartar. So cream of tartar is a byproduct of wine making, delicious, but it's actually an acid. The acid will help stabilize the eggs and give you a nice meringue. And I'm gonna go ahead and add in the vanilla right around now, one teaspoon, a nice vanilla makes all the difference. This is like the only flavor you're adding to the cake, so choose a good one. Start off whisking on low. 
go higher. You're gonna wait for this to froth up. Once it gets frothy, we'll start adding in our last three quarters of a cup of super fine sugar. Look how super fine this is. Wow. The air actually smells sweeter now. <laughs> okay, so it's frothing up. I'm gonna move it onto high and you're gonna drizzle this in a tablespoon at a time. Pretend that, okay, let me pause this for a second. Imagine that like you have all the time in the world to add this sugar in because adding it in slowly makes for a better meringue. That's pretty slow. That's slow. Drizzle, drizzle, drizzle. This is a nice time to think about your life choices. Are you happy? Would you like things to be different? Will this cake make them better? It will. Look at that meringue. See how fluffy it is? Pretty crazy. So relaxing, it's like actually mesmerizing. Last little bit. Now, I'm not done yet, but look at this. Look at this incredible. Do you, I wish you could feel how thick and crazy that is. It's so strong, it's like marshmallows. And it's very nice and stiff peak. Oh, do you, what? What is this? This is amazing. Just wanna like make sure there's nothing hanging out on the bottom. Okay, this is a cloudy dream. It's gonna be kind of messy, but bear with me. <laughs> All right, almost done. Now we're gonna fold in our flour. So add in about a quarter cup, sprinkle it in of the flour sugar mixture, and we're gonna fold it. So when you fold, and I don't have like a superstar folding technique, but all you're doing is bringing it from the bottom, cutting through the middle, and swirling it. And I like to move my bowl around. And what you're doing is you're incorporating the dry ingredients without collapsing all those billions of air bubbles <laughs> that are in there, or collapsing fewer at least too. Doing this gives you a fluffy, amazing cake. My very most favorite cake, German chocolate cake, which you can click up here for, is uh, made with an egg white as well. So you can fold in egg whites for a really fluffy, fine cake. It tastes so good. Ooh, the second you're harsh with the batter, you can just, everything collapses. You're like, <laughs> it's just like, it gives way instantly. That's why we're swooping up and cutting down. Everything's folded in and look at this batter. What? It's still very meringue and look, those are stiff peaks. That is some good folding technique because you have a meringue, still a stiff peak, but you fold it in that full cup of flour and the additional sugar. Unlike every single other cake in the world, you are not gonna do anything to this pan. It needs to be squeaky clean. Why? Because in order for the meringue to claw its way up and hold its place there, it needs something to hold onto. So you have this kind of um, matte finish aluminum, and if you greased it, it would just collapse. So you don't wanna do that. You're gonna have to cut it out carefully, but it has to be clean. It's a special cake. So now we're going to carefully, the cleaner you can do this, the less you have to um, kind of like clean the edge later because I don't like having burnt cake on the edge of my pan. Well, that didn't work, so let's just plop this in. So that's totally not cool. We have to, we have to smooth all of that out, in case you're wondering. Your goal right now is to get all this batter in here, which is quite resilient, mind you, without having huge air bubbles in. Those are not optimal. No one wants to eat an air bubble. You want delicious angel food cake, right? So gently smooth it down. This drives me crazy. I'm just gonna clean the edge off with if you've ever baked something and you get those little like raggedy pieces on the side of the pan, you know, it's like they burn in and it's not attractive. So it's an optional step, but I like to clear in the side of the pan off. All right, so right now I'm just using a skewer and going through here and swirling it around because I wanna break up any of the larger air bubbles that are hanging out there and just make sure the batter is all the way at the bottom. Totally worthwhile. Mm. This is gonna go into the oven at 350 degrees for about 40 minutes or until the top is like nice and golden brown and like, you know, springy to the touch in the middle. 
out of the oven, super hot, and now it has to cool upside down for an hour. The deal is that if you let it cool right side up, it would sink on it, it would just sink a little bit. So you want it to stiffen up a little bit or firm up after it's out of the oven, upside down so it's at maximum fluffiness. So I have this on a cooling rack just to protect the marble, to be honest. You just put it directly on your counter and this can just hang out someplace Come to room temperature, it'll be about an hour. It's worth it. Once your angel food cake is totally cooled, it's time to cut it out. So gently and carefully cut along the side as close to the metal as possible. Do the same for that interior tube and then lift it out. Now it's time to cut the bottom off once again as close to the metal as possible and then invert it onto a cake stand, cake plate, whatever you want. This is perfect on its own or with a giant tub of whipped cream. Just like pour the whipped cream on top and it's like the perfect vehicle for that. I will be just eating it like this because it's like cake bread. If you like this recipe, check out my cinnamon rolls. They are delicious and so amazing in a very different way. But for now, it's time for a bite. That's so good. Look at this. Look at that fluff. If you like my videos, hit that like button and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video with those cinnamon rolls.